Charlie's place? Oh, Mr. Cracker. Uh, Mr. Cracker, this is Elwood P. Dowd speaking. Uh, tell me, have you seen Harvey? Uh-huh. Oh, well, don't worry, I'll find him. And Mr. Cracker, I'm entertaining some friends down there tonight at 10 o'clock. May I have my regular booth? Oh, fine, thank you. Goodbye. kitchen and get acquainted. I thought Come I heard on. voices. Well, what kind of voices? Come on, Myrtle, I want to talk to you. Well, it sounded oh, something like Harvey. Harvey? Well, I better get going, Myrtle. Oh, but oh. Martin, you haven't finished your egg and onion. Business before pleasure, honey, even if it's a pleasure being with you. You make a great egg and onion, kid. A well, great don't you egg want to come back to the kitchen for some more? I'll see you tomorrow, Myrtle, out at the nut house. But, Marvin, you didn't finish your sandwich. Listen. What, what happened to you? He's not here, doctor. Then what are you doing here? Well, I was just having a little What fun. are you eating? An egg and onion sandwich. How can you think of food at a time like this? Get over to the Union Station. I'm told this fellow Dowd goes down there to watch trains. Yeah, all right, Dowd. Well, Marvin, why did you send him away? Oh, gee, some people can certainly pick the best times to keep other people from becoming acquainted. No, 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 my dear. Uh, oh, Judge Gaffney. Uh, Chumley, just the man I want to see. Mr. Simmons has just retained me to file suit against you. You know, I've been searching. Uh, file suit? I'm on my way to the office to draw up the necessary papers. Uh, Judge Gaffney, what happened this afternoon was an unfortunate mistake, but I've dismissed my assistant. We shall so... see what we shall see. Now, please, there must be some way. Well, hear from me in the morning. Oh. Goodbye. But surely, Judge, that... this is most unfortunate. The most unfortunate. Oh, Judge Gaffney. Judge Gaffney, I want... Why, you're not Judge Gaffney. Oh, you have much more hair than he has. Besides, I never forget a face. I'm Dr. Chumley. You're Mrs. Simmons, of course. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I'm glad to know you, Dr. Chumley. Uh, would you mind asking uh, Judge Gaffney to come back here? Oh, I want to tell him to sue you for $100,000. I don't think $50,000 is enough. Uh, Mrs. Simmons, can't we talk this matter over? After what happened to me today in the bathtub and everything, I don't want to talk it over. Well, then, will you please just listen? I don't want to listen to you. I'm suing you. Mrs. Simmons, please listen to me. I oh, beg of you. Well, I'll listen. All right, but I'm warning you, it won't do you any good. Hello? Oh, no, I am not listening to my radio. I am listening to Dr. Chumley. I just told him Mrs. so. Mrs. Simmons, uh, that picture over the mantel. That portrait of my mother, Doctor, happens to be the pride of this house. Who painted it? Oh, some man. I forget his name. He was around here for the sittings, and then we paid him, and he went away. Yes, I suppose if you have the money, you can persuade people to do anything. Now, Dr. Chumley, you brought this up. You might as well learn something quickly. I took a course in art last winter. I learned the difference between a fine oil painting and a mechanical thing, like a photograph. The photograph shows only the reality. The painting shows not only the reality, but the dream behind it. It's our dreams, Dr that carry us on. They separate us from the beasts. I wouldn't want to go on living if I thought it was all just eating and sleeping and taking my clothes off. I mean, putting them off. Oh, 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 doctor! Mrs. Simmons, no. steady now, steady. Don't upset yourself. Everything's going to be all right. What's the matter? Doctor, that is not my mother. Oh, I'm very glad to hear that. Elwood's been here. He's been here, Doctor. Now, 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 better be quiet. Oh. Oh. I'll take it. <clears throat> Hello? Yes? Yes? Who's calling? He's here. It's your brother. Let me talk to him. No, no, now, be careful. Don't let him know that I'm here. Be no, casual. I won't. Yes, yes, I'll be casual. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, Elwood. Where are you, dear? Oh, I'm here, Vita. Oh, is, is Harvey there? He won't say where he is. He wants to know if Harvey's here. Hmm, tell him Harvey is here. Oh, but he isn't. I know that, but pretend he is. Say he is. We've got to humor him. Hello, Elwood. Yes, dear. Harvey's here. Why don't you come home? It won't work. He wants us to call Harvey to the telephone. Well, uh, 
Say Harvey's here, but he can't come to the phone because he's in the bathtub. Oh, Doctor. We've got to do it, Mrs. Simmons. Yeah, Elwood, yes, dear, Harvey is here, but he can't come to the telephone. He's in the bathtub. I'll send him over as soon as he's dry. Where are you, dear? Oh, I, I'm... I'm... Oh, oh, never mind, Vita. Harvey just walked in the door down here. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Cracker, two martinis. Goodbye, Vita. You, you better look in the bathtub. It must be a stranger. <laughs> He says that Harvey just walked through the door. It must be a stranger in the bathtub. But I know where he is. He's at Charlie's place. That's a bar over at 12th and Main. 12th and Main. That's two over and one down. Isn't yes. It? Where are you going, Doctor? I'm going over to get your brother and bring him back. Take him to the sanitarium where he belongs. I want to observe the expression on his face when he talks to this rabbit. He does talk to the rabbit, you Well, think? they tell each other everything. Go what? I said, yes, he talks to him. But, Doctor, don't go out there. You'll regret it if you do. Nonsense, Mrs. Simmons. You underestimate me. No, no, you underestimate my brother. Don't worry. I can handle him. You can handle him. That's what you think. Myrtle May, see who the stranger is in the bathtub. Oh! <gasps> 